Excellency sir, may I take this kind uh, permission from you to invite Dr. Gladys Ngetich, who is an alumni of the Jomo Kenyatta University. Dr. Gladys obtained her PhD from Oxford University, but before that she was right here pursuing BSc Mechanical Engineering. Dr. Gladys. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. The Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, the Chancellor of JQUAT, Professor Joseph Mathundungu, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Education, Honorable Ezekiel Mashogu, Vice Chancellor JQUAT, Professor Victoria Ngumi, all leaders present, distinguished guests, um, esteemed faculty, parents and guardians, graduating class of 2023, fellow alumni, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And congratulations, graduates, you all look amazing. And well done for the, for the far you've come. And unlike Valedictoria and Cynthia, I have some advice. I was seated where you guys are about eight years ago. And as you prepare for the outside world, and with your permission, allow me to act as a big sister and offer you only three pieces of advice, mostly extracted from my academic journey. The first one is no condition is permanent. Did you know that in the 2004 KCPA exams, I had 298 marks and a C grade in English? And to put that into context, the leading candidate had 472 marks. But exactly 10 years later, while here at JQUAT in my final year of mechanical engineering, I received the prestigious Rhodes Scholarship to do my PhD at the University of Oxford. But perhaps what's even more surprising is the fact that I don't have a master's degree. Apparently, JQUAT is doing an incredible job. Well done, JQUAT. My Oxford professor, Professor Erland, Skyped to interview me, quizzing me on fundamental mechanical engineering principles like Bernoulli principle, what it is and its applications. And needless to say, graduates, please don't burn those books yet. You might need these things later. And anyway, after the interview, the professor thought I had a strong foundational knowledge in mechanical engineering, and I was okay to start a doctoral program without a master's degree. And then I spent four years working closely with Rolls Royce, researching better ways of cooling their aircraft engines. And then I defended my thesis in December of 2019, and off I went to the US to MIT for my postdoctoral research. Don't forget that this is the same student who went to a public primary school, Lelai Bay Primary School, somewhere near Mao Forest, deep in Akuru County. But I'm saying all this, I'm telling you all this not to brag, okay, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying all this to underscore the fact that no situation, no condition is permanent. And for that condition to change, you need unwavering tenacity. And so, graduates, as you begin your post-graduation journey, if you meet setbacks and failures, please don't give up. Take risks is my second advice. Please take risks. Embarking on a PhD without a master's degree was the riskiest move in my academic journey. Everyone asked, what are you doing? And I think I was also asking myself the same question. But I took the risk anyway, and I survived it. And after surviving that risk, I challenged myself to take more risks. And recently, I took a risk of writing a book, and I thought I was going to write one book. And then I ended up writing two books, The PhD Journey and The Bold Dream. I was so scared writing those books. It was a risk. What if no one reads them? What if my English isn't too good? But I took the risk anyway. Now, in addition to Dr. Gladys, I'm also an author. So if you don't take risk for fear of failure or for fear of what will people say, then you will lose so many opportunities and might end up regretting. And my last point is, my last piece of advice, be adaptable. 
please be adaptable. So far, you've been following a well-laid out script, a well-laid out plan. Go to primary school, get 400 marks. Go to high school, score an A, strong A. And then come to JQuart and earn your degree. And then after today, you get a well-paying job. That was my script, and I was following so diligently. But then some of you will be lucky and you'll get well-paying jobs. But I urge you, even if you get those jobs, please upgrade your skills and don't settle. But for some of you, some of us who are not so lucky to get a well-paying job after school, I learned a lesson. So after school, I didn't get a well-paying job. Um, and I was hoping that the script that I was following was that I'll settle with my university sweetheart and live happily ever after. Hello, campus couples. <laughs> but after graduation, um, I, we, my boyfriend and I broke up and I didn't get a well-paying job. I ended up doing online writing for four months, ended up working in a bank, yeah, with a mechanical engineering degree, I worked in a bank. But before long, I realized painfully that life is not a simple linear equation, but rather it's a complicated, open-ended essay question with no word limit and no right answer. And so graduates, as you go out there, be adaptable, explore, experiment. University education, I think, was meant to make us critical thinkers, problem solvers, status quo breakers, and I hate to break this news that today doesn't mark the end of your education, rather the beginning. And so as you go out there, I urge you to stay hungry, to read and research widely, to constantly challenge yourself. If you study mechanical engineering and tomorrow you feel entrepreneurial, start a company. If an opportunity opens up in a different field, grab it, and then you will figure things as you go. Don't be too selective be adaptable. And lastly, to corrupt Eliud Kipchoge's wise quote of no human is limited, I'll say no job, no opportunity is limited. Whatever opportunity that comes your way, grab it, give it your best, learn from it as you figure out what next. Congratulations, graduates. Go yay into the world. Don't give up. Be adaptable and take risks. Thank you very much.